All right, we should be live now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hopefully your day is off to a wonderful start. Let's talk about the uh, NBA slate for tonight. Uh, hopefully everybody had a better night than last I did last night. I lost Butler and, and Hart. I know those guys both had plenty of buyers, so probably not alone on this one. Sucks when it happens. Uh, what are you going to do but move into today? So we got a little bit of a new layout on Skype today. I'm still trying to get back to the old one, but I figured we'll just get going, start screen sharing, and we should be good to go from there, guys. Uh, click the thumbs up button if you don't mind. Subscribe to the station if you are new to us. Let's jump right in. Memberships available at the website link below. Let's talk about Kyle Lowry. Uh, he's a cash game lock for me. Uh, I like him in any format today. I guess I actually haven't looked in the last hour, um, but I'm going to assume Jimmy Butler is out tonight. He left last night with a sprained ankle, so the odds of him playing on the back-to-back -back I think are real low. So I just assume he's out. This means a bunch of the Miami Heat are going to get a lot of love today. Uh, one of my favorites is going to be Kyle Lowry, who's you know starting to come into his own with this team. Um, not a long-term scenario where they're going to want him playing big minutes like this in back-to-back -back games, but you know they're going to want to win this game at the Clippers. Only time there all year. I, I expect this game to be competitive, uh, and I think he's too cheap given the scenario. Um, no Jimmy Butler takes out their you know their main guy on the offensive side of things, so it's a lot of Lowry, Hero, and Bam. And I think getting Kyle Lowry at 7,100 is just a solid play top to bottom. He's still a very good player. Next up, let's talk about Scotty Barnes from the uh, Kyle Lowry's former team, the Toronto Raptors. So I think he's in play for all formats for me. Siakam likely will not play tonight, uh, per the coach. I've been super impressed by Barnes. Uh, of all the rookies so far, I mean, he's got to be the most impressive in my eyes. 17 per, 8.5 boards, 2.5 assists, 35 DK points per game. It's impressive, man. Like, real impressive. Talented young guy. Um, so there's no Siakam. You get a, a decimated Philly team, right? Like, no Simmons, no Embiid. I mean, it's just a team that's just not what they normally are defensively without two, you know, premier-level defenders like this. I mean, the game log kind of speaks for itself. Uh, I think he'll get enough love to be a cash game guy, but not so much that you really, like, like want to overly consider the fade in GPPs or anything like that. You know, and I'm not the only one impressed by this young man. Like, a lot of the other NBA guys have already come out and said that this guy's just, he's, he's it. He's got it. So it seemed to be a wonderful pick by the Raptors. Uh, I like him in any format tonight. And he's just, he's coming to his own really, really early on. He just, he's a good player. Next up, let's talk about Andre Drummond. So similar situation to somebody else that we, uh, we've mentioned recently. And what I mean by that is he's got 50 plus in three games with Joel out. And if this was like a long-term scenario, like where Embiid was out for the year, I don't think you would see Drummond playing as many minutes as you could anticipate him playing tonight. But no Embiid, no Harris, no Simmons. Coming off a loss the other day, I think they give him all the minutes he can handle. And while the price has raised, he's 50-plus in all three games without Embiid this year. We know he's – we talked about it yesterday. He's a substantially better fantasy player than he is real-life player. They're the home team tonight, coming off a loss against a Raptors team that's – well not what they were two years ago when they won the title. So you have to look at Andre Drummond. It's just a solid play top to bottom. I mean, realistically, if this were his spot all year long, he'd probably be 45 to 55 DK points per game. So the fact that he's 50 plus in all the games without Embiid, I think is real. It's a guy playing with a little bit of uh, uh, ambition and he's too big for the Raptors to handle. Next up, uh, Jordan Clarkson. So I got him down as kind of like GPP only. He's sub 5K. This is a guy that we've seen routinely more expensive that, uh, but let's just call it like it is. This dude's been mostly a trash mammal all season long from the shooting perspective. He's a much better player than that. He was much better for Utah last year. He's going to get better, but he's been in a shooting slump for the majority of the season so far. What you have to like about this one is one, the matchup with Indiana is very good, but he shot six of 12 the other day and four of nine from three. So it's possible that he got his confidence back and you want to get on something like this a game early before the masses start looking at a guy that, was averaging, if I remember correctly, 30, at least 30 DK points last year, if my memory serves me correct. Don't quote me on that one. I could be wrong, but it's a great matchup. He's sub 5K, and I don't think he's a guy with a, an abundance of buyer scent. There's plenty of cheap people. There's not a lot of expensive ways to get up to guys, so you're going to be able to afford kind of whoever you want. And I think Clarkson's a guy that we've seen routinely shove out 35 and 40-point games. The other thing to think about on this one is if he starts playing well, you know, I think playing the long game as the coach makes sense here. And what I mean by that is this is a guy that's valuable to your team coming off as kind of the, uh, the power off the bench, uh, you know, that little bit of that a flashy offensive guy who can kind of create some energy within the second unit. And if he starts rolling offensively, 
makes sense. Let him roll. Like he's had a bad year shooting the ball. Let him get going. Let him feel confident. Shooters need to feel confident. Uh, and that'd be a really, really good thing for the Utah Jazz, who are a very good basketball team to begin with. Next up, let's talk about another sharpshooter, Duncan Robinson, Casher GPP. I'm absolutely 100% assuming that today's slate is going to run without Jimmy Butler. I, I can't really picture a scenario based on what we saw last night where he's out there today. Now, have I been wrong before? Absolutely. Plenty of times. I'll be wrong again plenty of times. But in this situation, I feel pretty darn confident that we're going to see the Miami Heat with no Jimmy Butler tonight. And this is going to open up maybe as many as four guys from the Miami Heat you can run. You know, we mentioned Lowry already. Here's Duncan Robinson. You probably know who the others are. Uh, if he actually would hit some shots too, he could be a real big upside play right here. So I think Robinson will play good minutes tonight. You still don't have Oladipo back. Butler, so you need some wing players. And I think you're going to see Robinson out there gunning threes. He gets hot tonight. we got big-time potential upside right there. That's it, folks. Uh, I got nothing else to talk about today. I'll hit you with some football here in a little bit. Have a great Thursday, and I will see you soon.